So, yeah, a lot of questions have been raised around how were the Roosters mm. putting together such a quality squad um, with, with the salary cap constraints on, on them and, and, and like there are on every other club. But, you know, you've got to remember they're, they're run by a very successful businessman, mm. um, Nick Politis. Um, he's got many contacts. And you've got to remember there are third-party opportunities or, or deals available to players um, that – are, of course, you know, sent through to the NRL to, to tick off mm. and, and be given the okay. And if they're given the okay, then that contributes to player salaries. Mm. So there are, there are um, of course, you know, amounts of money that need to be paid on the cap to, to every player in your squad. But there are also um, amounts of money outside of the cap and, and particularly to the high, higher profile players that are available. And if they're sent through... To the NRL, you know, the salary cap auditors and the salary cap team at the NRL. And if they're given the okay, mm. um, you know, they are, they're pushed through and can help assemble a squad like the Roosters are starting to assemble now. Yeah, it's it's a tough situation because I, I, I understand all the jokes with the Roosters and I get it. Like, I, I get sombrero. it. The sombrero. The sombrero joke. It gets thrown around <laughs> once a week pretty much. <laughs> if, you, if you say Roosters around a table with a few blokes having a beer and someone doesn't say sombrero, mm. yeah. are you even blokes? <laughs> no. Like, seriously. <laughs> no. Um, but, like, I'm of the mind of, look, the NRL would be looking at this so closely. Absolutely. So they've... They've got to be. They've got to be under. Like, it's not like this weird world where the NRL aren't looking at it constantly, making sure everything's ordered. But yep. I will say it is tough for Panthers fans to stomach when you go, you know, Spencer Lino, what's really interesting about his situation is, is I don't think it's even for a starting spot because it'll be Lodge Lindsay Collins mm. that start mm. next year. And yeah. it'd be probably Spencer coming off the bench in the same role that he plays for Panthers. Yeah. Now, maybe, you know, he averaged about a 25-minute uh, stint each game uh, for the Panthers. Now, maybe the Roosters said, we're going to give you around 40 minutes. Yep. Um, so I understand people's frustration. I, it's just, the, the, I, I will say in the Roosters' defense, they have lost quite a few players. Uh, and it looks like, so it looks like Tupo's probably his last year because he's, he's off contract. Mm-hmm. Hargraves, I'll probably say it's his last year. Yep. There's Similar a situation, yep. lot of cash there. Of course. Um, so, look, I and, get the and frustration. A, and a perfect replacement yes. for Jared. Exactly, Spencer exactly. Lee. So I do get the frustrations. Do you think that you know, there's been some chat around displaying people's uh, salaries and, you know, players' salaries so that the public can see it and that mm. will try and crack down on the salary cap if there is any salary cap issues. Do you think that we need to look at the salary cap as a whole to, to make it a bit fairer or it's working as intended? Oh, I think it's working as intended. Mm. And, and I don't think, you know, displaying or making players' salaries public is the way to go. I, I really don't. I, I think that's, that's, a, that's a privacy issue. Mm. Um, you know... There's very few uh, industries out there that that show people's salaries, and and so why do you know why do elite sports people have to do that, men and women? I, I just don't think that that needs to be made public. It's it's a private thing, and of course, if there are people in our game that know exactly what these players are being paid, mm. that's they're employed to have that in front of them, to you know calculate where each club is at and if they're all above board and, and abiding by the NRL salary cap rules then it's fine mm. you know so I, I don't think that everything that's pushed through like you were saying before mate if it's pushed through the NRL and they're okay then it's play on and and as unfortunate as some people may see it where you know some clubs um, are favoured as far as you know being able to entice players to sign for them mm. That that's just an unfortunate event, and and given the dominance of Penrith of late, I think it was inevitable mm. that they were going to start to lose some players mm. because you're signing these guys. You know, you talk about the development of of young guys for the for uh, the Panthers, and and they've done a fantastic job with their junior system out there, but they are signed on relatively small contracts to start with. Mm. Um, you know, whereas you look at you know the more established players like you know Isaiah Yo, Nathan Cleary, these type of guys, they'll be taking up a large chunk of that club's salary cap. So when you have workers like a Spencer Lenu and guys like this being paid sort of a minimum wage, and there's an opportunity to move on and and be paid much more to play a similar role, then it's it's enticing. Mm. It's enticing to do that. And if you look at clubs, particularly with the ones that have sustained success. They're the ones that start to, over time, 
lose players to opposition clubs when they start picking picking away at those successful teams. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, in regards to the Penrith situation, it was almost just a matter of time because they just, you know, it's almost ironic because we, it's, it's a two-part conversation. They're getting picked apart because they're successful, mm. but they're also evidence of a salary cap working because two years ago, they could barely make the eight. Yeah, oh, sorry, right. three years ago. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Now they're one of the most dominant sides we've seen in a long time. Yeah. Cowboys, Sharks, all came out of nowhere. Um, in regards to the displaying of uh, you know uh, salaries, mm. I just don't understand the argument because the people that are educated and qualified to know the salaries know the salaries. That's right. That it's not like you know that, that every club is just hiding the salaries from the NRL. It, every every single contract that you see in the NRL is signed by the NRL and stamped approval. Yeah. You cannot sign an NRL player until sorry, a player to your club until the NRL stamps it. That's right. And so well the way it works is <clears throat> the contract's drawn up, it's mm-hmm. agreed on by both the club and the player. It's then lodged with the NRL mm. before it's accepted yeah. as an NRL contract. Mm. So it goes through the entire, you know, process with the salary cap auditors at the NRL. It's then lodged as an official contract. Um, before the player can start playing. Mm. And so, like, to think that making it public, do you think clubs are all of a sudden go, oh, you know, we've been lying to the NRL for the last 20 years, but now we're <laughs> going to tell the truth to the public? Like, no. it, that makes no sense. No. And look I'm, look, I'm in the content game. So I understand the urge to go, how good would it be to have the players' contracts in front of me? And mm. then we could say, who's, over, who's getting overpaid? Who's mm. underpaid? Who's playing way better than they suppose, like, they're getting... Yes. I, I get all that. I get all that. But at the end of the day... I personally believe, unless you're in a government job, because obviously it's public service, that's right. It should be private. Now, some people want to say the NFL do it, the NBA do it. There's plenty of things the NFL and NBA do that we shouldn't do. Mm. You know what I mean? Like just because they do it, it's like, oh, okay, we do it. Then no, no, it's a different sport. It's a different culture. It's a different country. That's right. Um, so yeah, I, the the public, the only reason I can see for people to be keen to get these salaries public is because they're nosy. Yeah, that's coming from a, the nosiest bloke in the land. <laughs> physically One and metaphorically. <laughs> physically <laughs> and metaphorically. So if I don't want it, then you shouldn't want it. No, no. Um, so I don't think it's going to actually help the situation no. in regards to. Um, no. And yeah, the Penny Panthers, the Sharkies, the Cowboys. You go look at the Tigers. You go look at um, the Bulldogs. I think it is. Yes, we've have dominant clubs, but I don't think that's salary cap related. I think that's culture yeah. and like and, uh, and, and development. Absolutely, and putting things in place. Like there are certain companies that do better than other companies and they've got the same product. Why? Because one company is run better than the other. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think the salary cap is, is working to, as as much as possible as intended. Yep. Um, now, uh, Craig Bellamy's future. Uh, he revealed on Monday that 2020 will most likely be his final year as the Melbourne Storm coach. Mm. Smithy, what do you reckon, mate? I, I f- <laughs> is, is that on repeat? It's honestly, I, I think this is the sheet from last year, <laughs> and the year before, <laughs> oh, and the mate. year before that. He's the best. Oh, I've heard, I've heard this from Bellyache a fair few times um, since I've known the great man. But oh, look, I, I'm not going to say yes or no because mm. you, you just don't know. Like what transpires throughout this season with the Melbourne Storm, um, you know whether they have a, a, a challenging year battling, you know, to play finals, or whether they come out and, and just absolutely blitz the competition and. Um, you know, sit on top of the ladder for the for for the most part of the year, and then maybe even take it out. Who knows? Mm. Maybe that will play a factor in, in Craig's decision. Um, I, I've been thinking about it, you know, not a whole heap, but just every now and again when someone um, you know brings the question up about Craig's future, I wonder whether it would be a good idea for Craig to come out early this year mm. and say. Yes, I'm going on, or no, this is my final year. Mm. Both for himself, his players, the Melbourne Storm, and the fans. Um, you know, it's just so everyone is clear about what's happening, mm. and so that they can start either making plans for next year. Yep. And I'm talking about the organisation, not mm. the players. The players need to focus on playing well. Um, or if he's staying on, then happy days. We just continue as is. Mm. Do you think it's you know what's holding him back in regards to you know he has mentioned before he's considering he's considering is it another premiership do you think or oh, oh it's it's always a premiership mm. can be it's it's always a premiership and and yeah thinking back to my days as as a player with Craig being coach that was the ultimate goal and it is for I'm sure every coach in the NRL is that they they want to be a premiership coach that year but 
that's what drives him. Mm. And, and and it's not so much, you know, he's thinking about that end game of, of winning the premiership that year. It's about getting the most out of his players every game that they play, mm. making them or giving them the opportunity to be the best player that they can be. And if he he's very confident that if he does that, then there's a great opportunity to go and win the whole comp. Mm. But I don't... Looking at his career, like he's he's a five time premiership winning coach. Mate. Yeah. There's what is there's six one more. Make it I don't know. Maybe well, in his eyes maybe it does. Well I, the only reason why I say another premiership from outside looking in, mate, and obviously I'm not in the building, but maybe there is a personal challenge of winning a premiership without guys like yourself, Billy yeah, possibly. Cooper. Yeah. You know, you, you were such a crucial part of all of those premierships. Yep. What an incredible, I guess, achievement, achievement. to go, you know what, I, I went a whole cycle of players. A whole two generations. So what, 20, like almost, almost two generations <laughs> and then one another, one other premiership. Anyway, we're going to go to a break. We've got a thousand texts to get to when we get back. So make sure to text in 0457 736 If you want to ask us questions, 1300 01 1170. We've got Nico Hines at 1230. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Uh, we are back for another year and it's exciting and we've got a thousand texts, a thousand texts. Uh, is anyone that's any text out there that st- stand out to you, Smithy? Well, um, let's just go, boys. What are your predictions? Top three chances to win the premiership, Kempi? Oh, I'm going Roosters. Roosters. I'm going right Sharkies. Okay, and I am going Penrith. Wow. Okay. Not in that. In, not in that particular order. Yep. So I'll probably go Roosters, Penrith, Sharkies in that order. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Penrith. Oh, In no wow. particular order. Okay, okay, surprise, okay, surprise. Okay, uh, to do the three peat. Wow, that'd be huge oh, if they do that. Mate. Particularly without you know Kikau, yeah, um, Coruscant, two big outs. Mm. Um, I'm going to say Sharkies as well. Yep. I thought they were pretty impressive last year. I reckon they would have learned a lot out of mm. their finals campaign. Um, reigning Deli and medalist, of course, Nico Hines, our Oof. guest coming up after the news. And I'm going to say ooh, I can't split between. I'm going to put four in. Okay. Cowboys. Yeah, that were my. And Melbourne. Melbourne. So Roosters is not, not there? No. Wow. No. I would love to get your thoughts, deeper thoughts on that a bit later because that's mm. really interesting. Yep. I will say, I do think the Sharkies, are, like, they seem to be in a similar spot to Penrith about a year or two ago where they had players that were like good young yep. players to, oh, these might be the next superstars of the game. Yep. Anyway, we'll get into that later. Uh, we've got some more texts here. Um, hey, boys, welcome for 2023. The only reason the idea for publishing salaries is that clubs and players cheat the cup. So if they were published, at least public fan, slash fans who the game exists for would have some confidence in the cap. Cheers, mm. HP Robbo. Um, I, I think in a, in a perfect world, that's mm. like in a glass half full kind of looking at it, you'd think, oh, yeah, the fans would just be like, oh, yep, there's the cap. It's all good. It's all sorted. Yeah. But I don't think that's how it would actually play out. I think it would yeah. play out, you know, players getting abused that yep. are getting paid a lot of money if they don't play well. Yeah. And, and you know, like, Fans' views of of player salaries or their worth, okay, is different to clubs mm. because people are people are purchased by, you know, different clubs for different reasons. Mm-hmm. It's not just for their playing ability; it's mm-hmm. for their marketing ability. Um, you know, you think of guys mm-hmm. like you know Tedesco and Cleary, mm. Cam Munster, these type of guys. You know, they're not just paid to play football. That's their main. Job, don't get me wrong. It's mm. it's their main job is to go out and, and play well and win football games for their respective clubs, but it's 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 also to entice, um, you know, commercial opportunities to that organisation mm. to bring in revenue through sponsorship and other means. And also, like sometimes market pressure increases prices, whereas a lot of the fans they're not sitting there going, oh, well, okay. Like for example, the one point two around the Moses. Like I think Moses is one of the best sevens in the game. Yep. Do I think out and out a non-premiership winning player is worth 1.2? No, personally, I'd have him around the 8 to 9. But mm-hmm. the market pressure of, well, if we lose him, who else do we get? Yes. I can understand it. Yep. Whereas I do think a lot of fans, they're not going to, you know, they've got work to do. They're not thinking about it as much as I'm thinking about it. So yep. they just see that figure and go, oh, that's in, that's too much, rah, rah. And you go, well, you know, look at the environment that it's in. Look at the, the way that number has come about. Uh, we've got some other texts here. Uh Afternoon, boys. Your logic, your logic relating to success means you ultimately lose players doesn't wash. How many players have the storm loss year on year throughout their dominance years? A lot. Yeah. Heaps. Well, and 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 that that 
goes back to the argument that that many people have brought up over the last what I'm going to say decade, mm. Kempi, that the storm are going to fall off the perch. Yeah, happens all the time. Now I know um, probably what you know. This person is um, well, it's Pedro actually from Perth. Um, Pedro, like, you're probably talking about maybe some of the higher profile players that the Storm have been able to retain um, for many of those years. But it get it goes back to the comment I made about Penrith about you know some of those worker players that are on the way up and uh, extremely important parts of of these squads which have helped you know these successful sides go on and win premierships. Mm. They're the ones that are taken from these successful clubs and moved moved elsewhere on on bigger contracts. Mm. Because the higher profile players, they're already on large contracts, so there's yeah. less incentive to move. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, yeah, I think that's that's our point that we're making there on that issue. And also, you look at the Storm, Tohu Harris, Kevin Pokhtar, international at the time. Uh, they just lost uh, Bromwich, Kofusi. Yeah, two Bromwich boys. Two Bromwich boys. They lost Greg Inglis. They lost Israel Folau, like Brandon Smith. Uh, Gareth Widdop. Like, yep. the, the Storm lost players. They just, Aiden Tolman. They managed to keep cert, like specific specific players like mm. three of the biggest ones so anyway we're going to head to uh, the news and after the news we have got Dally M player of 2023 Nico Hines on the line we are back on the captain's run and look to say I'm excited is an understatement because not only we do have the the, the man with the wettest hair in all the game <laughs> uh, the Heath Ledger of uh, Cronulla Sharks the, the, I mean it is honestly an absolute honour to have the great Nico Hines on the line Nico you there mate I'm here. How are you? <laughs> mate, absolutely fantastic. First of all, mate, I just wanted to let you know that we, we're thinking about you here. We're in the tough time you're currently in, in with your family. Um, you know, and we hope you're, you're getting through it as, as good as possible, mate. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's been pretty challenging, but uh, onwards and upwards and just move forward now and, and just be there for mum and my family and we'll get through it. Absolutely, mate. Now, so obviously, ruled out for round one. Now, I, we were speaking about this earlier in the week and I, I, we kind of felt... It was almost like, don't even bother risking. It's round one. It's a long season. Was it a, a ruling out of, like, you definitely couldn't play? Or was it a ruling out of, like, let's be rather safe than sorry? Um, probably a bit of both. You know, I, when I, you know, niggled it last week, um, I did it, like, in off-season last year, and it was something similar. So uh, we knew the risks and um, how to deal with it. So uh, we just thought, you know what, there's no real point risking round one although I, I did really want to play like obviously everyone wants to play round one you work so hard in the pre-season get to round one and everyone's pumped up footy season's back every every little kid wants to play footy their first game and that's me you know I'm a little kid that loves playing footy so uh, but yeah like you said it's no point risking it's a very very long season and um, just take it day by day and week by week and see how it uh, goes for the, for the next few days and next week Nico Smithy great to speak to you mate hey um, how is the injury going will you be a chance Round two because it's a it's a quick turnaround. Your Friday night against the Eels in, in the second week. Yeah, good to speak to you, Smithy. It's been a while, but um, yeah, it's all right. Like I did a really good strength session yesterday and got moving on it. And um, we'll see how t- we're day off today. We'll be on tomorrow, and then I'll I'll do a session Saturday um, while the boys are preparing for the game. But we'll just see how the next few days pan out. Um, unfortunate for me that it is a short turnaround, so that might not be in my favour but I'll be doing everything I can uh, to play around to um, but if the coaching staff and the performance staff feel like it's not worth it again then there's no way in the world I'll risk it but I'll be doing everything possible to be out there next Friday night Hey mate did, uh, like well, obviously you come on the show last year you had an incredible year but could you ever if you had your younger self talking to yourself now could you ever imagine a world where you are a fellow Dally M player of the year speaking to another fellow <laughs> Dally M player of the year did you ever imagine a world where you could say that oh never it's something that you just dream of as a as a kid and um, I would have been on the couch probably as a, a teenager even I don't even know how old I would have been when Smitty won a Dally M so it's probably about um, two yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it would have been actually old bastard <laughs> Mate. but yeah no it's, it's I still pinch myself about it, really. Like, it's pretty crazy, and um, I'm just glad that I'm my name's up next to someone like Smithy and JT and the likes of those players. Mate, has it, has it got you anything down in the Shire? Oh, a couple of free coffees, yeah. some he, schooners. Mate, you don't pay for anything anyway. Surely. <laughs> Do you, you wear that medal around the Shire or what? 
No, mate, I'm not like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually ran into Smithy up in um, the Gold Coast in, in his budgies and the Dally M on down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, can, I believe that, mate. I believe that. All lies. All lies. <laughs> now, Nico, like. It's it's an interesting year for you because, you know, obviously you've gone from you played incredibly at the Storm, but you went to the Sharkies, became the main man, Dalian Player of the Year. You know, you've spoken a little about your mindset, but you are the guy now. You know, every team is going to be coming after you. You know, the late shots, the, all the stuff that's a part of rugby league. Get the best man off the field. What's the headspace heading into, you know, round two or three when you do play? Is it any different to last year or is it the same? No, nah, not really, like... I haven't even thought about that, to be honest. Um, I just want to go out and keep playing my natural game and keep building on what I've done and uh, come up with new ways how to, um, you know, break a defensive line apart and, and pull teams apart, whether that's uh, passing or running, uh, controlling the game, however it is. It's going to present itself, really. you just got to get the little things right, um, make my tackles kick well, um, organise the team, and really the rest of it presents itself. Um so I've just got to get my mindset right, my routine right before a game, um, do the work at training, preview and review games, and I just don't feel like I have to change anything, just work even harder on what I was good at and um, keep continuing to, to gain strength and build strength. Now, Nico, mate, you, you spoke about um, yourself just maybe you know changing a few little things here and there. What about off the back of last year, um, out in straight sets in the finals, what did the coach talk about to the squad over this, you know, pre-season, um, you know, getting ready for another big year on where you need to improve? Uh, I just think it's doing things for longer. I think in, in, in patches we were really good at certain areas and then, like, our start in that sense, the after final wasn't up to standard and mm. we spoke about starting fast in those, in those bigger games and going after those sort of teams. So I think we got punched in the face really early yeah. against Para. I mean, against South, um, and they were up 12 nil within how I don't know how long it was, and we sort of couldn't come back from that. So, um, you know, we don't really want to get punched in the face first. We want to punch them in the face and go after them, and um, not sit back on our heels and, and wait for those um, good players and those better teams to, to come after us. So, you know, we've worked really hard on, on our systems, our principles, and the way we want to play this year, and, and hopefully the boys can show that a bit on uh, Saturday night. Now, mate, on the weekend, uh, oh, sorry, a couple of weekends ago, very fiery match uh, out at Leichhardt. Could you, like, what is Mulatalo's problem? Because he's always <laughs> angry. What's going on there? <laughs> at Leichhardt, we played at Belmore. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, my bad, my bad. See, I, I, you know what? I was intimidated watching the aggressive Mulatalo on the edge, edge there. No, he's, um, he's just someone who just plays uh, with his heart on his sleeve. He's, when he crosses that that line, not one person that other team in the other team is is mate, and um, I guess he's so competitive. And sometimes he does it at training too, and it really pisses me off. I just <laughs> go, shut up, Ronnie. Like seriously, <laughs> like he's the sort of player that you you hate playing against, but love to play with. And even sometimes I have to say, like on the field, calm down, Ronnie. Like we just scored yeah. the trial game. Who cares? <laughs> but. Um, and again, like you, you love playing because he puts so much heart and soul into each performance, and um, you know we wouldn't want it any other way, really. And mate, Braden Trindle, he's been named uh, at seven in your um, absence in, in the first round. How's he going to go? Yeah, he's going to go really well. He filled in um, there last year against the Storm when I was out with COVID, and he's probably one of the best players on the field, and um, he's such a naturally gifted player. And, and hopefully he can bring that again Saturday night. He's been working hard and um, he kicks really well and he controls the game well. So um, if he can bring that and just stick to his strengths and, and play the, the way Braden Trimble plays, I'm, I'm sure he'll be all right. Also, there's a young fellow that played in your first trial. I think his uh, last name is Peru, and he came across from the Panthers. Yeah, he, uh, he was yeah. super impressive. What, what's he like as a young fellow? Yeah, he's really impressive. He came to us this year and um, spent a couple of years at Penrith and would have learned a hell of a lot at that system. Um, a lot of good players coming out there at the moment. So he's just come over with looking for an opportunity. And, um, yeah, he really impressed in that first trial. He's a pretty quiet kid, but he's someone who's willing to learn and um, seems like a bit of a footy nerd and just wants to be the best and get the best out of himself. So, um, yeah, he's going to be one to watch this year for the Jets. And um, who knows what can happen if 
you know, something happens this week, one of the I can't play next week. He's probably next in line. So um, he's just going to keep chipping away, working hard, and um, yeah, I reckon he'll be a good player in the future. Nico, great season last year for yourself individually, of course, but the team performed extremely well. Um, had the Shire just absolutely buzzing for the most part of the year. Expectations on the team this year, mate? Uh, well, it would have to be to shoot for the stars and, and try to win a premiership. Like that's what everyone goes for, and you know, we're really happy we finished second in that regular season. But um, to go out in straight sets is not good enough, and. Yep. Obviously, we're going to learn a hell of a lot um, about ourselves and the way we play. And um, I feel feel like what we've done over the, the pre-season, we didn't lose, we only lost, I think, two players and um, Aiden, Tom and Andrew Fido. And we gained Oregon Kafusi and a couple of young lads. And I think it always helps when you don't have too much of a transition of players over. So we've just really worked on um, exactly what we looked on last pre-season. Another year in, combinations are building really nicely. So, um, you know very reluctant to say that we, we should be finishing around the same spot hopefully and, um, and, and we're really pushing our case towards the premiership and mate before we let you go uh, the great Dale Finuc and I'm hearing whispers he only has one haircut left is that true? <laughs> <laughs> oh mate he's, he's getting very very close uh, he'd be looking like he'd be looking like Smithy soon <laughs> I was waiting for it I was waiting for it <laughs> Hey, mate, we can't have all golden locks like you, mate. Come on. Don't rub it in. (laughs) Hey, mate, before we let you go, um, of course, the All-Star game not so long ago, and you picked up the Preston Campbell medal for Man of the Match. Just just describe to us what that meant to you. Yeah, that um, that was huge. You know, you don't obviously play to to win um, those sort of medals, but... To get that after the week that, or the couple of weeks leading into it, mm. I was experiencing. Um, I wasn't going to play. I was going to stay home with mum and, and stand by her side through the trial. And um, you know, she she said, "No, nah, Nico, you're going over there. And you're going to do it for me. And you're going to do it for our culture and, and inspire the young kids to um, go go through this sort of life. And um, you know, there'll be plenty of kids out there who have similar stories to me, and especially young Indigenous kids. So. Um, to go out there and play and, and win that medal, it was way more than that for me. It was for all those kids out there who, who look up to all those players wearing that jersey that weekend. And um, yeah, it was something I look back on forever. And I think you know that's it's a pretty important uh, medal that I've won and something I'm really proud of. Um, the week's amazing. The Maldi culture over there was unbelievable. They they do culture so well. They taught us so much. And um, again, like. I think mean, John McPherson's won that medal a couple of times. Mm. Uh, maybe even Greg Inglis. And I got presented by Greg Inglis, who uh, two idols of oh, wow. mine I looked up to watching those games and wanting to be those people on on the Indigenous stage. So, um, yeah, it's pretty special. And, um, yeah, done it for my mum, for sure. Mate, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you're taking a really tough time in your life, mate, and you're actually helping quite a lot of young people. So thanks so much for that, mate. We appreciate it. Good on you, Nico. Thanks, guys. Make sure you uh, re-add my number into your phone's video. <laughs> <laughs> mate, it's there, mate. Number one, speed dial. Mate, they reckon, they reckon, he's, a, yeah, yeah. Mate, they reckon he's tougher than the Prime Minister to get a hold of. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Appreciate See you, mate. it. Catch ya. There he is, the great Nico oh, Hines. He was into me, wasn't he? Mate, he was in. You know what? It's a deli, yeah. No, I think it is. Think, I was about know. to say, he's got this newfound yeah. confidence. He's yeah. got the big shiny medal. Yeah. Well, he's got two now. He's got the Preston Campbell yep. medal, deli and medal. Yeah, he's very, very chirpy. Very chirpy. Yeah. Very chirpy. Uh, we're going to head to a break and uh, we'll get back to your text, but we've got plenty to talk about. Plenty to talk about previewing the season. Welcome back to the Captain's Run. Make sure to give us a follow on Instagram at SEN League. We've got a brand new Twitter, Twitter the Captain's Run. Uh, it's mm-hmm. going to be a great follow, I'm sure. It's going to be one of the best follows on Twitter. There's not much doing on Twitter. There's not much uh, controversy. So I'm sure the Captain's Run will be a great follow. Uh, we've got some text here. Uh, Pat from Toowoomba. Do you think the Broncos can make the top four? What do you reckon, Smithy? Ooh, top four. That's a difficult one. It's yeah. difficult for all teams, isn't it, to make the top four? If you, oh. if you make top four seasons end, that's a huge achievement. Mm-hmm. Um, are the Broncos ready to do that? Well, they were sitting there last season, if you, if you can... Take your mind way back to that oh. point, Kempi. I'm sure you remember. Why are you doing this to me, Smithy? Six weeks. Yeah. Six weeks. That's yeah. all they had left. They were sitting fourth, and they missed out in the finals. <laughs> so are they capable of doing it? Yes. 
but they have to be at their very best. Mm. And they have to have a lot of things go right for them. Like like most teams, I know that's a quite yeah. a general sort of comment, but partic- particularly for someone like the Broncos who are still, you know, you know, learning the trade. They've got a lot of young guys still coming through. Um, oh, certainly they should be they should be pushing for top eight. They have to be in the top eight this year. Oh, anything less than a top. When you look at that roster, roster yep. that's a finals footies roster. Has to be. Anything less is absolutely, definitely not good enough. Look, top four, I just don't think with how grindy the season is, mm. if you if you cut the season down, you know, four to six weeks, and I'm not saying that just because last year they fell off for that six weeks, yeah. but just a young squad. Yep. They Most young squads real. I mean, that's what's been so impressive with Penrith yep. is how consistent they've been that's and how right. young they are. Whereas the Broncos, just a bit young, I think. And there's, and there's probably a, a few things at play here as to why, you know, what happened to the Broncos happened. Mm. And, and like I said, it's a multiple, um, there's multiple things that may have happened. But one was they were dealing with, they had a, a huge chunk of their squad play Origin mm. for the first time. Mm. And a handful of them played every game of that series. So that, that, that takes it out of you both physically and mentally. So when you return back to club football, it's it's sometimes hard to get going in those first couple of games. It's, mm. it's a bit of a letdown, and and it's that's not something new. Like that, you you talk to any Origin player, any coach, they've found that with their players returning to the NRL competition, sometimes it does take them maybe a week, if not two games, to get going again. Mm. So I think that was something that the Broncos had to contend with last year. Mm. Um, that and yeah, you know, a month suspension to you know arguably their best player last year, Paddy Carrigan. That didn't help as well. Farmworth also out for a... Herbie, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he had a huge chunk of time out towards the end of the year. You know, all things being equal, if they play the football that they're capable of playing and they stay healthy, they really should be playing finals football this year. Mm. Oh, I mean, there's there's absolutely... Anyone that expects anything less than the, the, with the Broncos in regards to their squad on paper... I would be shocked. Mm. Uh, they really... What, what, it is exciting, though. I guess another question is, is like to make sure, hopefully, we can get 20-plus games from Renault. Yes. Um, now, it's it's interesting. Renault's a really interesting uh, player because when you actually look at his last few years, he's averaged over 20, 20 games. Mm. But he does seem to be a player that every now and then just quite niggly. Yes. So just got to hopefully he can stay on the field. Also, it is the second year for Ezra Mam. I think that a lot of rookies in their first year, they come on, they explode, they get to their 12th, their 13th game, maybe even their 15th, and they start going, whoa, this first full full year is a bit much for me. Mm. So he's going to be refreshed, more mature. Um, plus that, adding Reese Walsh. But we're going to head... Oh, look, I could speak all day, Smithy. I apologise. <laughs> I could speak all day. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we're going to get to your texts and your calls. Welcome back to the Captain's Run. Into the second hour of the year. Exciting times. Make sure to follow us on at SEN League. Give us a text 0457 0457 736 736 1300 01 1170. But huge news coming out of the Broncos. Honestly, a double blow to me heart. My missus said, why are you in the, the corner crying? I said, we lost Flegler and Herbie Farnworth. And she said, that's very strange. It's very strange. Um, then she packed her things and she left. So uh, <laughs> That's a lie. She's still there. She's still, She's there. still there. I think. I think. Yeah, now, hopefully when I get definitely. back today, she'll be there. Yep. Uh, but Smithy, mate, what are your thoughts on, you know, it's a really interesting situation the Broncos find themselves in because you could make the argument that although Katoni Staggs is the show-stopping centre, mm-hmm. there is an argument to be said that Herbie Farnworth is more consistent at the moment. Yeah. Well, he, he seems like the worker of mm. the two, isn't he? Like he, He's the one that does all you know the, the, the pretty hard running and yep. the tough runs out of the other end. Not not saying Katoni doesn't, mm. but Katoni seems like more of the, the go-to man on the big plays. Yeah. So when, when they're looking for a try-scoring opportunity, mm. looking for some points, they try and structure up their set and go, here, Katoni... Make something happen. Mm. Um, huge loss, mate. Huge loss. Both players, but Herbie last year was just in great form. Um, no surprise that the Dolphins have, have chased him and got him. Um, and then on the back of Herbie moving, big Tommy Flegler. Oh, mate, I want to get your thoughts on this because... That, that, I, that's massive for me, for the, for mate, the Broncos. I, I don't feel like it's getting enough attention. Yeah. I personally believe, and I want to get your thoughts on this because obviously you're a much better judge than me, I think there is a world where Tommy Flegler dominates Origin for the next ten years. Well, well, he he can do that if he wants to. Mm. Like having experienced, um, you know, the the time we spent with uh, Tommy last year in camp. He didn't he didn't play Origin last year, but he was in the squad. Mm. 
trained every training session, was there in the games. Um, I think he may have been 18th or 19th man in a couple of those matches. Mm. So he was he was a bees mm. from playing in one of those matches last year. Um, it was just kept out by you know some guys that were you know slightly ahead of him at the time. But he's just he's a he's a raw style of a player with so much natural ability and and so much more that he's going to learn over the over the next few years. Oh, well, he's man. still a very young man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's more than likely going to put on a, a few more kilos. Mm. Um, probably has leading into this season, and and you know his ability to carry the ball with speed. He's got great footwork, late footwork mm. at the line, which is a huge weapon in today's game. Mm. Um, given you know the size and speed that he already, already possesses, that late footwork that he has at the line makes him so much harder to handle. Um, it, oh, I think it's a huge loss for the Broncos. No. Massive gain for the Dolphins, though. Oh, it changes huge their change. entire forward pack, yeah. in my opinion. Like it, it takes their forward pack from some good stalwarts that are going to get through their work to mm. an, a real X factor. Yeah, a real X factor. And I, I agree with you. Like uh, Flegler. For me, I don't think he's even close to what his potential is going to be. No. And I think, as I you know, kind of just said, in two to three years, if he isn't impacting Origin in a big way, mm. I'll be surprised. Yeah. That's, that's how highly I rate Flegler. Yeah. He's also got an offload in his game yep. that just, I mean, in today's game, if you can get an offload, increase the pace, all that kind of stuff, you know, mate, mm. it's, it's super important. Uh, to the Dolphins then, you know, does this, the Dolphins, obviously, the, the, the big talking point was they didn't get their superstar. Yeah. I still think they obviously need their their superstar. Yep. But at the same time, this this does take a step in the right direction, I think, for the Dolphins. Well, absolutely. And ha- if you look at the way that they're building this squad, they're preparing some some quality young forwards in particular. Mm. So they they're trying to put a, a a really strong forward pack that they could probably keep together for, you know, several years down the track. And then in the hope of, you know, starting to perform well, winning, you know, some some games, um, a fair few games, they'll be able to attract one of the marquee players in the competition. Mm. As you mentioned, they missed out on a few this time around. Um, they were chasing guys like Munster, Ponga. Um, so Cheese. The Cheese missed him. Yep. Um, and and a couple of others because of, I believe, the unknown. Mm. You know, for, for these guys sort of in the peak or, you know, coming towards the peak of, of their careers, their playing careers, there was just a little bit too much uncertainty about the Dolphins for them to to make that huge move. Mm. Um, you know, whereas if you look at guys like you know Jesse Bromwich and Felice Kafusi, these type of guys who are heading towards the back end of their career, it's you know it presents new challenges for them. They've been in the game for quite some time. They have been able to achieve you know you know some some great achievements in like premierships and play Test football mm. and Origin football. You know, it was it was an opportunity to go up. To a new franchise and be be you know part of a legacy built at that club. Mm. Um, so I think you know with these two guys going particularly, um, and then you add in another young fellow like a Tommy Gilbert who will be playing there this year, mm. who is a State of Origin player now. Yeah. You know they're going places, mm. but the the key for this club and the key for particularly the fans is patience. Oh, mate, absolutely. Like, yeah, you're right. And patience and I guess when it does get tough, appreciating that these decisions are made for success down the down line. Down the track. Whereas they, could, they probably, you know, they, maybe there is a world where they just went absolutely insane, got the best side they could get possible in that first year, mm. and then in two or three years they're just complete bust because, yeah. you know, they've they've gone the short term. Yep. They've definitely gone the long term. Um, just with in regards to the Broncos, sorry, go back back to the Broncos. Do you think that this will help keep Payne Haas at the club? Even though he's contracted for a few years, we did see there was, mm. you know, quite a uh, push and pull in regards to him getting upgrades. Mm. Does this change anything, do you think? Or Well, I don't think so because I, I, I think the Broncos have mentioned a few times that they're not willing to pay a million. Is, is that correct? I, mate, that? there's so many things I've heard. I've got no yeah. idea. I don't well, even know he's contracted well, at the moment. We're, well, yeah, we're just talking on, on things that we, we, we've heard, but... Um, you know, the, these two guys moving on and a little bit more money being in the cap, mm. sure, that, that looks great and, you know, for the opportunity for Payne to be paid more. But it, it's at the end of the day, it's it's whether the club wants to pay him more money. Mm. If they think, you know, if he's on, you know, his current contract, which is what, somewhere between eight nine 900000 Yeah, something, something yeah. like that. 
I think the Broncos would say, well, mate, we, we believe we're paying you your your value at this at this football club. If mm. you if you want to be a Bronco, we believe that that is, you know, where you're valued at. Mm. Um, he may get much more than that elsewhere, Kempi. Mm. But that's the decision that these players have to contend with is, am I happy playing where I'm at right now for the salary I'm on? Mm. Or do I go elsewhere for more money and potentially not have the same amount of success? Yeah, and it, that's the one thing I think superstars like Payne Haas, like generational talents that just the, the what he does is incredible. I think that, that hopefully he's got someone in his corner that says to him, mate, you're most likely not going to win a premiership at any club that's paying you $1.2 million. Yes. You, you, if you want to win a premiership, you're probably going to have to be on seven, eight hundred k mm. maximum, mm. maximum. Um, because a lot of the time, I, I feel like players don't get that advice where they go, you know, they get this massive offer and, and managers don't go, listen, mate, like, yeah. that's great. These are the consequences. This is what's going to happen though because regardless of how good you are, mm. You, you can't single-handedly carry this team to a premiership. There's really only two or three players right now that you could go premiership is guaranteed within the next five years kind of yep. thing. Um, now, on to... Uh, so, great news for the Dolphins. Incredible news for the Dolphins. The Broncos, I'm sure they'll be fine, but definitely a loss. Now, on to the Dragons. Wowee! Mm. I feel uh, I feel terribly for this oh. playing group. The, the amount of stuff they've got to deal with in regards to you know the media, and then obviously they're not playing well, and the vibe doesn't look great. It's just <laughs> it's a disaster. No. Oh, well, look, it's not a disaster because they could come out and prove us all wrong. Yep. But it's it's not looking good at this current point. Yeah, and and, and a lot of it can't be too is their own doing. Like mm. a lot of a lot of the you know the, the off field staff and all that sort of it, it they're not helping themselves. Mm. They're, they're, what what it's doing is it it. It puts unwanted attention on them. Mm. Off the back of last year where, you know, the performances weren't that great. Um, they didn't have the best season at all. You know, a lot of fans were very frustrated with the way their team performed. Um, and then they have a few, you know, things going on off field. Again, just it just heaps pressure on themselves as a playing group, as individuals, and as an organisation. That's mm. just, it doesn't need to happen. Oof. They just need to be a little bit smarter about that. Look, you know, looking at their their side, they're a competitive football side. Mm. They're they're a very competitive football side, and we've seen two wins from the eight last year. We that's what I mean. We 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 seen last year that they actually were able to perform well against some of the good sides. Mm. And you know, I, I think back to this game in particular, and, and I was there, so I remember it quite quite well. Um, was when the Dragons took on the Rabbitohs. Now, I know the Rabbitohs were a little bit out of sorts, but they put 30 on them in a half of football. Yep. So that 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 skill, that performance, it just, it just doesn't appear out of nowhere. Mm. It's there in them. Mm. They just need to find a way to extra, extract that and employ that, that type of performance every week mm. because that's what the NRL is about. It's not about turning up, you know, one week and then having a couple of weeks off. It's not even about turning up and playing a half of football yeah. and then having the second half off or vice versa. Mm. You need to be on every minute you're on the field because they're playing an elite competition. Mm. Yeah. It, it's 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 what is expected of, you know, elite sportsmen to be on all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like I I, I think when you look at the situation, like for example, I think they were out in Mudgy the reports are that the argument happened. Like, i got no issue with the argument. No. I don't care. Who cares? Two blokes having an argument, having some beers. No mm. drama. The issue I have is like, why are you rolling in? At, if it's, again, apologies if it's not true, but mm. like, if you're rolling in at six o'clock <laughs> in the morning or even, even four o'clock or three o'clock after mm. you've just been, after what's just happened, yep. you go on, I don't know, is the head, is your, as a team, yeah, in the right headspace. Now, I understand, look, going for some beers, you get home at 12 o'clock. No dramas. No dramas whatsoever. But if you're rolling in that massive a night, it's like, is that mm. really the right time with everything? Because it's like, it's, it's, it's this, really. When you're in a team, you have an obligation to the person beside you, your coach, and everyone. Yep. And so, surely, I, I would hope that the senior playing group would sit down with all the boys and go, boys, like, our coach is under the pump right now. So, anything we do... Is going to make his life more difficult. Absolutely, and vice versa. Yep. And I, I hope that that's being communicated because it, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But the good thing is, is last year 
they were literally two wins outside the eight. Yep. There was a period they were wor- worse sitting in the eight. Yep. And if there's any player that can do something absolutely amazing, it's the great Benny Hunt. Benny Hunt. You know, so... Well, everyone, he was tipped to be the Dalian Meadows finished, what, second or third? Oh, mate, he was he, up there. He was in the top four. Mm. Um, he wasn't far off and, and had an amazing year last year. And I'd like to think he, he can back it up again. Mm. Let's look at the first month of footy, though. Mm. All right, so... Well, great news for Dragons fans. They got the bye first That's up. That's a win. Right? So they're two points. Boom. They, they will be in the top eight. <laughs> yes. They will be in the top eight. Yes. Um, well, there's 17 teams. They might be. They're the top uh, nine. Top nine. <laughs> <laughs> top nine. Oh, that sounds yuck. Oh, top nine. Yuck. Top nine. Okay. But then they've got the Titans at home. Winnable. Round two. Mm, they got your boys, the Broncos. But that's winnable at Suncorp. Well, it's been they they've been that's been a good Look, matchup. The Broncos aren't flying so high that the Dragon. It's you know what I mean. That's a winnable game. I would still tip the Broncos to win it. Yep. But if Dragons win, no one's going to be sitting there going, "Oh my god, it's a, a massive upset." Then right, the next two. Okay, so mm. these are their first four games. Then they got the Sharkies at home. That's tough. a derby. Mm. Always a tough game. And then down at Win, the Dolphins. So possibly three from four, maybe three from four, which is a massive, great, a great start to the year. If I'm if I'm a Dragons player looking at my first month of football, and it's important, you know, to have just have a. I used to like to have just a little look. Yeah. Okay. I didn't look too far ahead and go, oh, you know, this and this and that, and we're playing them and and blah. Yeah. It was week on week, but have a little plan mm. at the start of the year and go right first month of footy, ultra important. Mm. Which games? are must wins mm. and I mean not like oh, I hope we play well and, and get the two points hey boys this game is a very winnable game we must take the two points away mm. so three from four that will that That's will really start. start that will that will take so much weight off their shoulders to start the year oh absolutely and and I I, th- I agree with you in regards to you don't want to you know when, when I was playing we were the same like we didn't want to look you know obviously a top four finish was always what we talked about yeah. anything less wasn't good enough but also, you didn't want to look too far ahead, but you did want to put the season in blocks. Absolutely. And go, because like, it's a really good way, when I, you know, for me anyway, it's like when you get those games where you go, we're supposed to win it. If you just roll into that game going, yeah, we should win, you don't have as much motivation. But if you've already planned three weeks before going, boys, this is a non-negotiable. We yep. do win this game no matter what. And if we don't, it we're hurts win- out. We're winning. We're winning. And it hurts our bigger plan. <laughs> yep. It gives you a reason to get up for that game, if you know yeah, what I mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's... Look, in a, in an off-season that's been tough for Dragons, that's a hopeful start. And also, you know, I'm going even more glass half full. A derby, anything can happen. Absolutely. You know, it's one of those games where it's just... It's, it's, a, it's almost like an origin to a degree where... Yeah. Well, everything... they're going to be up for that. Surely. Up surely. Um, Benny Hunt, the great Benny Hunt leading them. Hopefully they can sort out their spine and stick with it. That's what I think is going to be a real key for them. Mm. Um, outside of that, do you think... What, what do you think is a, a pass mark for their first 10 games? And do you think Anthony Griffin has that much to worry about? Uh, well, look, it, it, well, certainly results are, will determine mm. that, Kempi, for, for sure, as they do for all coaches or most coaches. Mm. Um, you know, looking past looking past that first you know, four games, which is five rounds for the Dragons. I'm, I'm delving a little bit further here. Yep. They then follow that up with the Titans, Raiders, and then they face the Chooks. So, look, this is a side that could easily, easily put themselves, you know, securely in the top eight after, you know, two months of football. So they, they really should be thinking, hey, we need to be in the top eight after eight rounds. You'd say minimum five from eight or four from eight, oh, minimum. They're, they're, they're more than capable of winning that amount of games with the draw that they've got. I don't know if that's a, you know, I don't know if, if Dragons fans look at their draw and, and see it as favourable, but particularly in that first eight weeks, they've got some very, very winnable games of football. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at SEN League. We've also got a brand new Twitter, the Captain's Run. Or subscribe to us on Apple or Spotify, The Captain's Run, if you want to listen to us at any time. But, Smithy, absolutely huge news in the off-season. The CBA deal between the players and the NRL yet to be finalised. Now, there's there's reports, and look, the reports have been all over the shop in regards to accuracy and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> reports that things have been agreed to, so there doesn't look like there's going to be a boycott. But I guess what's your overall feelings of the whole situation, mate? Well, yeah, look, the, the the pay dispute, as they're calling it, I don't think it was, the dispute was so much about 
pay mm. or, or share revenue or anything to do with the salaries of um, the players, I, I think people like to frame it that way mm. um, to try and put a little bit of pressure on the players to sign the uh, the agreement and, yeah. and get it all done with. Um, you know, speaking with some people, you know, pretty close to the action, a lot of it was around um, actually securing. You know some 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 clauses or you know some conditions around you know past players, mm. um, you know some hardship funds, uh, looking after former players that you know finished the game in in you know f- with with some carrying some injuries into you know their their life after football. So you know dealing with some sort of you know hardship as far as you know surgeries and whatnot. You know guys would. Difficulties with their knees, with their shoulders, with their backs, any any type of issues there that, you know, there's some sort of funding or a pool of money that those players have access to. Um, any type of um, hardship that other players fall onto at times, um, there's money there to help out. Um, some, some education pieces around, you know, um, transitioning away from the game as a player. Mm. Um, sometimes, you know, more, more, more than ever... The NRL are introducing or, or bringing in young people straight out of high school with no uh, work experiences all at yeah. all, um, and I know there's 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 education um, pieces available to, to players throughout their career, and 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 they can sort of do study or work part time, but it's really difficult to juggle that at times oh, with, with a training mate. regime. Oh, mate, as as you know, like, yeah. um, so I, I think. That's what the sticking point was for the playing group, mm. was that the NRL hadn't quite come to an agreement on those pieces. Um, and also, too, was, was trying to um, secure a, a CBA for the women, for mm. the NRLW, to have their own agreement with the NRL that will then look after them into the future. I think it's pretty close. If it mm. hasn't been signed already without us knowing, I, I think it's pretty close. Mm. I always predicted that would happen mm. um, having been involved in a couple of CBAs in the back end of my About career 17 of them eh not that many because <laughs> <laughs> they roll around sort of know, they line up with the broadcast <laughs> for our listeners out there they, the, the, the CBA agreement um, you know between the players and the NRL it, it's, 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 a, it's a term for um, that lasts the same pretty much the same time as, as the broadcast deal so they line up uh, they line up the broadcast deal with the CBA deal um, just so they have you know revenue things under control yeah. so um, you know it, it's a process that that it takes quite a while for both parties to um, to come to any sort of agreement which you know it does in a lot of different industries and you know over this you know pre off season pre-season there's been a lot of talks about boycotting and all this sort of stuff I don't think that was ever going to happen I know the players have to talk that way but in the end I don't think either party really wanted that to oh. happen. Well, I won't say really. They didn't want it to happen at all. Mm. So it's great news, particularly for the fans of the game, that we're going to go ahead. Hopefully, Parramatta and the Storm take the field tomorrow night. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's your I, I'm sure they will. Surely, surely. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I guess, look, look, as a player, obviously I want the players to be taken care of as much as possible. And from a business perspective... Although I don't think it's the right thing to do, I can understand certain parties wanting to paint the other party in a certain light to put mm. pressure. Yep. That's just a part of business. Yep. Is it does it make it right? Probably not, but it is a part of business. It's that's a part right. of it's just we live in the we live in a world where that's, you know, that happens. Uh, in regards to taking care of ex players and that, you're absolutely right. I, I think I don't everything that I've heard as well from people close to it Outside of, I think, the first offer that was less revenue percentage, outside of that, it has not been about pay. So no. for months and months. Yes. Um, so I think it's going to get done. I think that it's going to be a win for both. I think the, the NRL is going to get more out of the players, which is great. Yep. And I think the players are going to get more out of the NRL. So it's a win-win for both parties. Absolutely. So we're going to head to a break. After the break, we're going to do our bold predictions for Ooh. 2023, and then we've got some games to preview. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith and myself. Thanks to the SEN app. Download it today for free in the App Store and listen anywhere, anytime. Now, let's get straight into the 2023 NRL season predictions. Oh, what do we got, Kempi? What let, do we got? We'll start off with premiers and runners-up. All right, I'm going to say my premiers. Oh, this is going to come back and haunt me. 
Yeah. Haunt us. Yeah. yeah. Something. Seriously. I don't know. I'm going to say premiers this year, the Cowboys. The Cows. The Cows. No way. Mate, they, they were one win away from a grand final last year. Mm. Got knocked off by a, a very good Parramatta side mm. that night. But they had their opportunities. Yes. They had their opportunities. And they put themselves in a golden position. Prelim in Townsville. Oh. 430 degrees it was. Oh, mate. Seriously. Uh, I was sweating in the AC. <laughs> um, and, they, and they lost. But I think they would have learned a bit. Massively. They would have learned a bit, a but, fair bit out of that. Like, you know, you've got some, uh, you know, experienced players like Townsend, but a lot of their, their forward pack is quite young. Yep. Drinkwater's only in his third or fourth year. He, I mean, mm-hmm. he didn't even have the fullback spot at the start of the year. Yep. Jeremiah Nanai just Nanai's killing it. Uh, then you've got Reese Robson, who's on the edges of origin. Outstanding. Tal Malolo, another year in the new kind of system where mm-hmm. he's not getting worked as hard. Yep. Did we mention Scott Drinkwater? Oh, Scotty Drinkwater. I think wow. he's like, what about his dropout in the trial? Did you see that? Crazy. Are you serious? Is that legal? <laughs> Is that legal? Oh, um, and uh, I'm going to go runner up my boys. Storm. The Storm. Yeah, but they, okay. you know what, mate? The haters, they keep knocking them. Oh, you yeah, know, the yeah, Bromwiches yeah. are gone. Kafusi gone. Brandon okay. Smith. Yep. I reckon they'll be there. Billy Ake is going to work some magic. Yep. What uh, about yourself? Mate, Premier's Roosters. Oh, what? Yeah, I just made... Really? Look at the roster. Yeah, true. There's no way that's under the cap. No, no I'm that's joking. That's fair enough. <laughs> nah, that's fair enough. <laughs> no, I'm going to go Roosters. I think uh, they just... Their roster is incredible. They're all in peak, you know, basically peak form. Uh, Luke Keary and Sam Walker, they've sorted out positions. They mm-hmm. tried to swap six and seven for a bit there. Now the Walkers are seven, Keary's a six. Yep. Tedesco, Manu, Suali'i, Tupo, Hargreaves. There's a lot of motivation. If it's Hargreaves last year, Tupo's last year, that's yep. motivation there. Then runners up, Sharkies. Yeah, no, Sharkies. fair call. I think fair the call. Sharkies are going to be better, even better. As I said, they remind me of Penrith Panthers about three and a half years ago where mm-hmm. they had, when you looked at their squad, like first of all, when you look at their squad, a lot of them are graduates from the Newtown side that won the comp. Yep. And so a lot of these guys have been together for a while, but also they were like on the edge of... Yeah, they're first graders, but are they, you know, some of the best in the game? Mm-hmm. I think Mulatalo is slowly creeping up as one of the top tier wingers. You know, obviously Nico Hines, they've got a Dally M7. Uh, Matt Moylan, guess who had the most, well, you're going to guess it straight away, the most try involvements last year? Matt Moylan. Matt Moylan, <laughs> you got it, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Um, so, yeah, yeah Sharkies. Okay, so, so you're saying Roosters. Now, they're missing quite a few of their, their big guns Particularly for round one, mm. maybe maybe even so round two. Mm. Can they, let's just say they don't make the top four, or can any team win it outside of top four? I think they can this year. Really? I, I think any, I would go as far to say is nearly, right now, obviously we need to watch the footy. Yes, of course. Maybe even anyone in the top eight. Because you have to remember, last mm-hmm. year, Roosters were outside the top four. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rabbitohs were outside the top four. Storm were outside the top four. Yep. Uh, and Raiders were the last team that was in that, that top four. Yes. Uh, sorry, bottom four. Four of the top four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Yeah. If you st- stick with me, stick with yes. me. It's the first. It's the first show back. Got, yeah. Now, biggest improvers. Who you got? Oh, I got the dogs. The doggies. Yeah, just um, couple of couple of big ins for them. Um, particularly, you know, Kick Owl um, and Reed Marnie. I think Reed Marnie is going to make a huge difference to that footy club. Mm. Just someone with, you know, with just with his class from dummy half. Particularly his passing. Mm. He's going to get the ball, you know, really quickly to the halves. When they're in attacking positions, he's got one of the you know the prettiest. Can, is, oh. that, is that a, is that a, can we say that? Well, I'll prettiest say it. dummy half passes yep. in the competition. They said you had a bit of a pretty dummy half. Pass, most mate. effective. Let's just say yeah. most effective. <laughs> I don't want to say prettiest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will say prettiest. I'm sticking with my yeah, first. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Pretty. He, he he he's got a lovely pass. Um, he's he's tough as defensively. He's got a pretty good kicking game as well. Definitely getting better for sure. Going to make a huge <laughs> difference. Um, you know, to that side. It seems like they're up and about. Mm. Um, Josh Adokar coming off a, a huge World Cup campaign too. He'll be full of confidence. And then you've got the wrecking ball, Vili Army kick out on an edge Ooh. too. So big improvers, I, I believe. I'm going Manly. Manly's Manly. my big... In- yes, yeah. yes. Look, I... Oh. Look, they were thereabouts last year. They, they were playing really well, mm. even without Tom Travojevic. Yeah. And then it just all went off a cliff. Yes. Whereas I think just watching him in the trials, it's not about the results. The results in trials... They matter, but not you know they don't matter. It's not that the be all and end all. But it was the way they were playing. It was it was the togetherness. It was the it was the glue that they played with. You know they've got depth in the halves now. Cooper Johns obviously coming in. Mm. Uh, they've got more experience in some of the younger fellows. They've got guys like Ko Weeks. They've got a young dynamic hooker uh, Gordon. 
like the, I really think Manly under Seabold, I think at the end of the year, a lot of people are going to be rethinking their opinion that Seabold can't coach. Because there's really? a lot of people out there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and well, look, after what happened After Brisbane. what happened, fair enough, because it was an absolute disaster up there. And there's a lot of things I disagreed with. Yep. But I think Seabold still has a lot to offer. I really do. Absolutely. Uh, and I think by the end of the year, we might be going, oh, wow. Like, this is why he was so highly touted. This is why he's the rookie coach of the year of 2018, I think it was. Yep. Uh, so I've got Manly. Okay. Most improvers. What about your Delian medalist? Mate, this is this is my smoky. This is my big call. <laughs> this is my big call. Okay. Scotty Drinkwater to win the Dally M this wow. year. Wow. Yeah, Scotty Drinkwater. Wow. I think he's gonna do it. I, I like when you're doing drop kick, drop kicks like that, yeah. drop goals like uh drop outs like that. Yep. You can do anything. Well he featured yeah, he was about in the fifth, Delium. I think fifth or fourth, fairly high up last yep. year on the count. Yep. And he wasn't even. He played like he missed a chunk. He missed a chunk at the start of the year. Well, he wasn't getting picked in first. He wasn't grade. even getting picked. That's right. Imagine a whole year in it, and then you look at the squad in the in the spine. He's really going to take all the points. You'd say. Yeah. You know, Nanai might get some points. Yeah. Tamalolo maybe, but he's kind of changed the way he plays a little bit. He's still massively impactful. Yeah. You know, he's probably going to win most of the points. Well, he's going to he's going to touch the ball a lot. Um, a lot of a lot of their point scoring will come off the back of his involvements. Mm. Um, so I dare say I, I agree mm. with, with them. You know, with both of us predicting that the cows are going to go well this year, I, I think he's going to feature highly. Well, who's yours, Dallium? I'll tell you what I've got. Okay, right. This might be this people are like why well, out of the box. Okay, Josh Hodgson. Wow, comeback. Wow, what a comeback! That would be one of the great comebacks. What a comeback! I mean, and he has the talent. He has yeah. the talent to do it. There was a period there where he was killing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I like that call. Josh Hodgson. Mm. And we haven't had a forward win a Dally M medal mm. for a couple of years now, a few years. So He's, I think, looking, he's looking jacked. Uh, I, I'm watching a little bit of his um, footy in the trial matches. He, mm. he he looks fit. Okay. And and he spent, like, he has to be fresh. Oh, like, I know he's had to deal with, you know, uh, some serious injuries. He had an ACL, come back from an ACL. Mm. But... In, at the same time, right when you're doing that rehab, I mean, he's not out there every week, yeah. getting you know bashed up and whatnot, and you know dealing with the the week to week grind of NRL. He's got to be fresh and mentally, surely he's ready to go. Point to prove. Big year for Paramount. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Now, top try scorer, who you got? I've got Murray Tualangi. Tualangi. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Again, along that theme of the cows doing yep. well, he he was he would have been in the top handful of. Players like try scorers last year. Surely. I think Alex Johnson smashed everyone, <coughs> uh, but I think Murray Torlangi may have finished maybe oh, fourth, fourth or fifth. So if they get, if they're going on this you know run again <laughs> this year with the cows, I, you know, he'll he'll be the he'll be the man that scores a lot of their tries. Mate, that offload back in against the Tigers, crazy, is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, incredible. Um, mate, you? I'm going same vein of thought. Yes, Mulatalo. Ronaldo. So he's on the left wing for the Sharkies. Yes. Right to left pass, always yeah. always good. Dali M, Nico Hines, mm. most try involvements last year, Matty Moylan. It's all coming together, Smithy. Mm. It's all coming together you, for Lil you, you've done the, it's, it's an equation. You've done the math. I've done the math on the board over there, mate. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> it is too. I don't uh, know what you were doing over there. Anyway. <laughs> I, was still, oh, I was stealing people's tips. That's what I was doing. Oh, right. Um, now, uh, State of Origin winner. This is a tough one. Oh. Who you got, mate? Well, let's not beat around the bush. I got Maroons. Oh, are you serious? Queensland. Of course. Actually, a bit of mail, actually, Smithy. Okay. Uh, what do we got? Ran into the great Billy Billy the Kid. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, I was doing some interviews for the Nine launch. You were supposed to be there, mate. <laughs> I <laughs> miss you. I miss you. Okay. Uh, what's he said? A bit of mail. So I was just throwing out, like, you know, what's it like dealing with, with pests in right. sides? yeah. And he said, oh, you think you're talking about Cam Munster? And I said, yeah, I'm talking about Cam Munster. He said, well, actually, Cam Smith's got a bit of pest in him. <laughs> Mate, that is absolute rubbish. That is quite and I know, Billy Slater. No, I know. And, and Billy, he loves our show. He'll be listening right now. Mate, that is rubbish. <laughs> absolute rubbish. I've, I felt I looked after him in my career. Okay. I felt like I tried to look after him. So he's him. betrayed. He's betrayed oh, you. Oh, mate. He's, <laughs> he's let me down. I'm going to have to have a word with him about that. When the show, I'm calling him straight away. Oh, one of the best. One of the I'm best. out. I'm not coaching. I'm not helping him. Now, for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm sorry, Billy. Oh, if you I'm need an assistant, back. Billy, I'm not qualified, but I'll do it. <laughs> um, instead of State of Origin winner, how about we go something to do with State of Origin? Some mm. One smoky for each team that could play. Smoky, yeah. So, for example, I'll go first. Ooh. New South Wales. Jeez. There's a world where Reese Robson gets a starting spot. Yeah. See, that, that for me, he's not so much of a smoky, but he's close. 
Okay. Really close. Okay. But, you know, he's come, mate, he's coming up against pretty good opposition in, in Cookie and Coruscant. Mm. And I think Cookie's in for a big year because he's got a point to prove. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I don't think he'd be far off at all. So mm. I agree with you. Mm. Um, for the Blues, um, Queensland. Jeez. I don't know. Maybe maybe a Reese Walsh. Oh, I like that. Maybe. Yeah, because good form at the Broncos. Maybe. A bit of a smoky. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see, you know. I don't, I, like, again, is he is he a smoky? Well, he hasn't played yet. He hasn't played yet. Neither Reece Walsh. Um, well, because it's interesting because KP, I'm, I'm assuming, look, I personally think, of course you pick KP at fullback, even if he is playing six at club, because yeah. we've seen what he of can course. do. Yep. Um, another really interesting one, I think, is the Tom Deard and Sam Walker situation. You know, mm. Deard and come in and played really well. Yeah. A lot of people have touted Sam Walker to be the replacement for DCE long term. Yep. But I actually think there's a world where Tommy Deard and may... You know, I'm not saying he is, but... Feel that Yeah, he, he may. He may feel yeah. that void. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's as, as a, a clear-cut you know, just straight in for Sam Walker, no. as some may think. And you know what? The argument is is valid given Tom Dearden's performance in Game Three. Yeah, like he 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 wasn't far off being one of the. He was so the, good. the best player on on the park. Mm-hmm. He was so good in a, in such a a big game in a in a high pressure game that Game Three was, and so much on the line for Queensland oh. playing in front of their home fans. He he stood up and just absolutely nailed it. That's fine. Mm. Absolutely nailed it. So, mate, the argument is completely valid. Now, we're going to head to a break. After the break, I mean, we've got your texts to get to. We've got your calls if you want to call in, 1300 01 1170. And then we've got previews of round one. I never thought I'd say it again, Smithy. Oh, what is it here? here? I was like, is rugby league ever coming back? So <laughs> make sure to stay tuned because we are going to preview round one of the 2023 NRL season. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Make sure to give us a follow at SEN League. Also, the Captain's Run on Twitter. We are now on Twitter. Uh, so make sure to follow, subscribe to us, Apple, Spotify, the Captain's Run, all that good stuff. We've got some texts here. We've got some text. Uh, mm. uh, what's this? We've got some McHugh. Webby, you only got media retired if you play for South NRL and then you can go and play in the Super Bowl. Oh. Everyone knows that. <laughs> what? Oh, they're just having a go at a couple of those players that, were medically retired oh, in the NRL, okay. and, but okay. then went on to continue playing elsewhere, mate. Okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, this, oh, okay, so I'm reading another. Okay, here's another text. Yes. Can you guys please explain why you think AJ won't be leading try score again? 30 tries in two years in a row, first time ever. No, 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 it's a, it's a fair point. Mm. Um, and we, I, I considered AJ up there. Like, he's just a freak of a player, finds a line every week. Um but just on that theme of the Cowboys, you know, believing that the Cowboys are going to have a big year, I just thought, well, you know, Murray Torlungi, one of their their more pro- prolific try scorers. Well, he was last year. They they scored the most tries for the Cows. I think mm. he'll he'll have a big year. Not knocking AJ, he'll be up there again. Mm. Have to be. Oh, surely. I mean, one of the best finishes we've seen in a very long time. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 crazy. The Rabbitohs, they can just find a winger that can finish. Obviously, Nathan Merritt. Oh, mate. Crazy. Johnson. Uh, afternoon, boys. You say the CBA isn't about money and it's about taking care of ex-players. Totally understand, but the money needs to come from somewhere. So if they need to pull money for that, then they'll have to take it from the cap and the players won't want to accept that. So it's a tough one. Uh, great to have you back on air, boys. Uh, Damo the Dirty Eel. Uh, mm. I don't think... You know, for example, let's say there was a fund for a, a work site. You're a tradie. Yep. I don't think anyone would expect those tradies to go, well... You're going to get paid 25 bucks an hour instead of 30 bucks an hour, and then that five bucks it's for in case someone gets injured. Yeah, you know, I think that would be a bit tough. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. And and it's not the, the the players the players are fully aware of any any pool of money that's set up for any any other um, form of you know help outside of the game, you know, to former players and and whatnot. Mm. It it comes from the bottom line, mm. like it comes out of their pockets. And so what they wanted to do was just establish establish, you know, these pools of money and have it there ready, thinking about, you know, former players and, and guys that they played with in the past and Great knowing point. that, you know, down the line somewhere, something may arise where this will come in pretty handy. Mm. The players are fully aware that it comes out of their pockets, mm. um, but they're willing to make that sacrifice, you know, for, for guys that have played the game. Yeah. For example, again, just reportedly in my understanding, they actually aren't even increasing their percentage of revenue Compared to their last CBA, yes, so it's the same. Which is which is like that's an example of them not asking for more percentage of revenue. Yep. But then taking that and using it for 
other yes, things. That's right. Uh, now, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we'll get to your texts. We'll get to your calls. Call us one 300 1170 Text us 0457 736 736. After the break, we are previewing round one of the NRL season as well. So stick around for that. Uh, but as I said, we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the captain's run. Now let's get straight into it. Eels versus the Storm. Oh, oh my God. What a way to kick the, this whole season off. Oh, a great way to, to kick off the, uh, the 2023 season. These two as well. They, they've got a little bit of dislike for each other, well, should I say. Eels have beaten them five out of the last six games, I think. Yeah, well, the last four. The last four times they've played, they've, they've got a victory. And the Storm... Haven't got a great record at Combank either. Yeah, I, I, but their round one record, it's, there's a mixture. You haven't know? haven't been beaten since no. yeah since Craig took over yep. as coach. So mm, difficult one. A um, couple of players out for both sides. A mm. um, couple of big name players actually for both sides. Sean Lane, of course, broken jaw was outstanding for them in the in the final matches of last year. Yep. Um, Ryan Madison is suspended. Uh, Jermaine Hopgood comes in. Big yep. rap on Jermaine. Oh, Hopgood. mate! If if you're an Eels fan, fan, if you're a footy fan, watch Jermaine Hopgood Hopgood tomorrow night. Yeah. So and along my man Josh Hodgson. Yes. I've tip for the Deli M. Hope he's hopefully he starts well. Mm. Um, big matchup that is. Oh. Hodgson versus Grant. Mate. And and we'll go a long way to the result of of this match if both men go out and, and play really well. Um, but some big names, of course. Uh, with the Melbourne Storm, Cam Munster, Jerome Hughes. They just need to stay healthy, don't they? Christian Welsh runs out for the first yeah, time huge in, after huge being in. named officially as the Melbourne Storm sole captain yep. for the year. Of course, missed pretty much all of last year by one game with a ruptured Achilles. And he's missed him massively. Oh, massively. Huge, yeah. huge. So he's a huge in. Um, this, this is a really tough one to, to tip. Mm. Um, I'm going to lean towards Melbourne, just given, you know... Just their, their starting power mm. and, and the way that they're going to be prepared for round one. Have not been beaten in you know 20 years in round one. Um, but it's going to be a tough one. Going up there, not a great record against Parramatta of mm. late and, and pretty much an awful record at Combank Stadium. But I'm going to tip them slightly. I'm going to tip the Eels to oh, break the run wow. because I just think that the Eels at the moment, their forward pack, I would say, is probably... A, a bit of a jump in front in front of the storm. Yep. And I think that Dylan Brown, Gutho, and uh, Mitchell Moses, mm. uh, although I consider Storm Smite to be better, I don't think they're that much better. Yes, that's, that's okay. So yeah, no, I think, fair point. So I do think that the forward pack may be a bit tough to handle unless yep. if Big Nass has a massive game, he could be the difference, as he always yep. is. Incredible. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I think I think the Eels just get it done. I'm really Just. excited to see the Storm's young uh, winger, Will Warbrick. Oh, he what, looks what was special. this preseason? Holy. <laughs> Big, rangy. Yeah. Boy, he's 105 kilos, surely. Plus. Massive. Can finish too. Fast, yeah, strong, can't wait. Will, will he be? Will he be matched up against Sevo? Oh, I think stop it might be. Oh. Stop it. Mate, there's matchups all over yeah, the park. All over the park. How good. Um, and so, also, I reckon, I reckon, honestly, tomorrow... We'll see a drop. Mitchell Moses resigns. Boom, I reckon. Before the game? Before the game. Oh, Surely it's done already. All over it. Surely. Uh, now, let's move on to our next game. Warriors versus the Newey Knights. This one is a really interesting one because, you, you know, the Knights are actually coming in, well, the last time I checked, they're quite outsiders. Whereas yep. the Warriors, I think they finished like 15th last year. Yep. But I like, even though they struggled against, you know, in the trial against the Storm, I like mm-hmm. what I saw. I'm actually tipping the Warriors for the win. Yeah. Um... Well, they're at home, and they've been at home for the whole preseason, so they've had a pretty settled preparation for this one, mm. unlike the last couple of years, being away from home and you know all different situations that they've been in. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be great to see the Warriors oh, get their season, um, get their campaign kicked off with a win against Newey. A lot of pressure on Newcastle this year. Oh, so holy. much pressure. Like, on, on the whole place. Um, Going to be really interesting to see how they jump out of the blocks. Mm. If I was a Newcastle player, you'd want to get out of the blocks on fire oh, after what they produced last year. Yep. It, it just it really wasn't good enough, was it? Oh, absolutely. And you're right, like that, if they can win that, they have the class, if they can win that first 20 minutes, they have the class to blow a game away. Like, that's right. To just take it away. It's not like they're a team that's struggling with a roster or, no. or, or top-tier players. Yep. Um, and that's the one thing I thought last year is, 
I just they just energy wasn't there. Like there was never a game where I was watching the Knights going, No. Holy, that defense is crazy. No, that's right. And and look, if you go through their list, right? You go through their list, um, you know, they've got Bradman Best, strike center, um, Dom Young, probably their best player last year. Greg Marju on the other side. Was fantastic. And then you throw in Caelan Ponger at six. Jackson Hastings, yeah, big addition, playing at halfback, leading the team around. He's, a, as we all know, he's a he's a great competitor. Then you look at their forward pack, the Saifidi boys, up in the front row, Jaden Braley at hooker, Frizzell, one of the you know top you know top tier hookers in the competition. Frizzell, Fitzgibbon in the back row, and then Kurt Mann, Adam Elliott, like Adam Adam Elliott, new signing. Like that, this is a side mm. that when you look at them on paper and the lineups, and you just go, they should be winning more games than they lose. Absolutely. They really should be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see how they come out. It, it's, I think it will take a little bit of time for them to gel because obviously Pong are new to the six roll. Yes. But, yeah, I'm going to tip the Warriors to get a win. Now, uh, next game, oh. Panthers versus oh. the Broncos. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I, wish the, I wish the Panthers had a won the World Club Challenge by 1,000 points. So they came in really underdone in round one and just Broncos ambushed them. Yep. But I, I think the Panthers get the job done here. Uh, interesting to see how they go first game up. Well, yeah, they're playing at home, so that that's that's a good thing for them. Mm. But um, I think all eyes are going to be on Penrith to see how they handle the the changes that, yeah. you know, to their lineup, where they've had Coruscant <laughs> for for several years, they've mm. had Kickout for several years. They've been a, a settled team, mm. not a lot of changes. Um, yeah, I think they all eyes are on how they're going to handle that. Look. If any team's going to handle the changes, it's going to be Penrith. Yep. Because um, they've got a wonderful system there. We all know that. Uh, but the Broncos, I actually don't mind looking... As a as a Bronco fan or a player, I wouldn't actually mind first game up playing the reigning premiers. Okay. So, I, I just so think, you hey, see where you're at. Let's just, let's just have a crack. Yeah, I like see it. See where we're at right now. Make adjustments after it. Yeah, it's it's a good point because, you know, sometimes if you have, let's just say, an, a game that's not as tough in the round one, mm. then you're almost second-guessing yourself. Like, are we top tier? Whereas, like, anyone that plays the Panthers and goes, okay, goes, we can do it. Yep. We can do it this year. Absolutely. Um, who are you tipping? Uh, look, I'm going to go Penrith. Yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, we'll head to Seagulls versus the Doggies. Uh, this is a this is going to be again two teams that could genuinely go from outside the eight to challenging for the eight. In my opinion, mm-hmm. I still don't have doggies in my eight, but I, there's a world where I can see them challenging for it. Right, I'm tipping Seagulls. Who you got? Uh, yeah, look, I, I think Manly. They, they were impressive in the preseason. Mm-hmm. Of course, took out the preseason challenge. Uh, great result for Seagulls. Cooper Johns. How good starting in the halves. Yep. Um, in place of Josh Schuster calf issue yeah um, which is you know unfortunate for Josh um, but yeah he, he gets he started half back uh, sorry at, at five eight Kelma Tuolungi back row he come over from the Tigers um, good strong back rower oh yeah um, good addition to Manly I, I think Manly too strong at home yeah I, I agree and I, I I think that there's an excitement there I really do I, I think that that there seems to be this kind of back against the wall mentality at Manly. Like they've gone back to, cause there was a period where, you know, the old joke, everyone hates Manly. And then they came yep. through with all these characters that everyone really loves. So everyone yep. loves Manly again. I think they may go back to that whole, all right, everyone hates Manly. Let's go. Yeah. Um, doggies though. I, I cannot wait. To, I think it's going to be a slow burn for the doggies. Yep. So stay patient. Yes. Once those connections connect, I say click, boom, done. Uh, Cowboys Raiders. Who you got here? Uh, I'm going the cows. Yeah, virtually unchanged from last year. Um, Jimmy Tamo, the back of the cows. He's back. He's back. How how long was he away for? Oh, mate, was quite a while. Oh, would it, would decade, it, decade. No. Yeah, surely. Yeah. Back of the cows. Um, so he's on the bench. Mm. Uh, yeah, look, cows unchanged, um, almost unchanged from last year. I think I think they win this one, and they I think they might win it well. Yeah, it's a really good opportunity for Cowboys to send a message to, I think, to the yeah. rest of the comp. Mm-hmm. Like, yesterday, last year wasn't some little fluke and blip, blip, on the, blip on the radar. Yep. We are here to make some noise. Yep. And so, yeah, send I'm a message Cowboys. early. Yep. Uh, <laughs> now, on to Sharkies versus Rabbitohs. I am actually going the Sharkies here. You got, actually, sorry. Ah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Wait, wait. Oh, hang on. Nick hang on. Hines is out. Hang I'm on. going what, Rabbitohs. What did I just hear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going Rabbitohs because Nico Hines is out. If yeah. Nico Hines was playing, I would have gone Sharkies. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, fair point. He, he's so important to that footy side, isn't he? Um, mm. I, I'm with you on this one. I think Rabbits. 
Yeah, I, I think Rabbits will be too good. Um, yeah, like, uh, the, 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 it's a good matchup, both of these sides. And, and we spoke with Nico earlier about, you know, the expectation around their team this year and speaking about, you know, top four is, is where they want to be. Outside mm. of top four is not good enough. They want to be finishing pretty much where they were last year. I just think with in his absence, I think the Rabbitohs will be too strong. Mm. Yeah. It's uh, I can't wait to see Latrell Mitchell. Yeah, I'm just so oh. excited to see him play. Trell Mitt. Trell Mitt. Uh, okay, now, <laughs> the Dolphins and the Roosters. Uh, I think the Roosters, I think it's going to be, first of all, massive congratulations to Isaiah Katoa getting a debut. Yep. Starts at 5'8", but I think the Roosters too tough. Yeah, I agree. Um, I do agree, although... If there's ever a chance. Oh, wow. Well, if we, there's ever if there's a, a chance. chance. Okay. If there's ever a chance for the Dolphins to claim a, a big scalp oh, like yeah. the Roosters, it's got to be this week. Hargraves, Manu, Crichton, Connor Watson, all unavailable. Mm-hmm. All unavailable. Mm-hmm. But you still look at their, their lineup and it's strong. Yeah. It's still one of the strongest lineups in the comp, mm. even with those handful of guys out. I want the Dolphins to put in a good showing in front of yes. their home crowd. They're playing yeah. at Suncorp. Not sure what ticket sales are like at the moment, mm. but I'd like to say it's going to be a, a pretty healthy crowd there. Hopefully. Um, all the Dolphins supporters will be out there. There's no doubt about that. And I, I reckon just league people, mm. fans, would just want to come out for the occasion. So they were the first game for the Dolphins? It's it's an event. Mm. The very first game that the Dolphins play in the NRL, um, a team that's been a, around a long, long time, um, are finally making their steps into the NRL but I think the Roosters too strong Tigers Titans who you got oh the Titans mate they're your team the Titans well I'm living on the Gold Coast now mate so you backed them all last year I've got to support the locals now listen boys <laughs> Big Tino I'm sure he's listening I, I know he listens to our show actually I think I think uh SEN uh, partners with the Gold Coast Titans this year. Oh, there we go. So um, all the boys will be listening. It'll be on in the radio um, in the gym right now. Oh, surely, surely. Um, Come on, boys. Let's win this one. Come on, boys. Let's win it. Yeah, as a Gold Coaster, growing up on the Goldie, come on, boys. Yep. Let's go. I'm backing the Titans to get the job done over the Tigers. Uh, but I can't wait to see the Tigers new recruits and see Absolutely. how much difference they make. Absolutely. We're going to head to a break. After the break, unfortunately, we'll be wrapping the show up because it's a, it's a short show because the cricket's on. The cricket. They reckon the some, test in India. Some cricket game's on. Oh, the brushness. Okay. Righto. Anyway, we're going to head to a break and we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Uh, we are wrapping the show up, Smithy. Oh, We've got to leave early. Mate, unbelievable. Unbelievable. First, first one. First one back in their brushness already, mate. mate we're, we're off. Can you speak to some higher-ups, please? Oh, I just don't know. Well, you know what? The Australian cricket team is playing. Yeah, fair so enough. Fair enough. Well, fair, we're fair happy enough. to give them the air time. Absolutely. Hopefully the boys get a win. Oh, come on. We come need on, one. Surely. Give me something. Uh, we've got some text here. Tip of the round. The buy will win. Stu from Cronulla. Oh, 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 Stewie. How dare you, Stewie. Well done, Stu. Good job, mate. <laughs> one of your best, mate. One of your best. Uh, okay, here we go. Well, look at this one here. Look, the Goat and Beak. Long-time listener, first-time contributor. I just wanted to ask your opinion on the addition of Sam Verrills to the mm. Titan squad. Um, I think it's I think it's a great addition. Um, seen Sam Verrills play live a handful of times last year through commentary and really impressive young fella. Um, I think he's going to do wonders for the Titans. It's just something that they it's it's a position that they needed locked in mm. dummy half. Um, you know they they've had you know two or three guys play that position over the last you know twelve to eighteen months and they just weren't settled. Mm. Um, in in that position, um, you know, I think he's going to make a huge difference to the way their footy is played and the consistent way that they play their football because that that was their issue mm. last year oh. was they were just so up and down. Like their quality football was great, mm. but then they just they'd lose their way, they'd forget how to play, and just they 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 could not find any sort of momentum anywhere. Yeah, and and you can't like, you cannot express enough how valuable it is to have a nine that is. You know, for example, when a seven runs past the nine and says, oh, get us to that, that post yes. there. Mm. It's just something so simple that you'd go, well, of course, any player would be able to do that. Yeah. It's not as easy it's as you think. It's not that easy. Because you've got to, <laughs> you're, as a nine, you've got to be telling forwards, oh, get here. Yes. Don't yes. be selfish and step overs and rah, yep. rah, rah, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, also, uh, if you have time, I would love to hear your thoughts on the spine they've set on as well as particularly Campbell on the bench. Mm. I'm going to have to say, 
I think for Campbell's sake, they probably need to make a call on him because I don't, I don't think he's going to be satisfied at 14. 14. And I think he's a first grade fullback. Okay, so you're thinking he's got to be in, in the starting side or elsewhere? I think so. Elsewhere. I think so. Yep. Because I, I just, I think he's too good to not be playing. And also as a 14, yep. he just probably doesn't suit that role. Well, well, and, and given like he's not the biggest bloke, although mm. very brave. Oh, man. Very brave. He's, you know, the, the way he attacks the ball. You, you watch him when he plays fullback, the way he attacks the football in traffic and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm of the same opinion. Yeah. I, I think if he's going to play NRL, it's going to be in the starting side somewhere. Yeah, I agree. That is us. First show oh, done for the year. We're done. Every single Wednesday from 12 till 3. Join us, guys. Super excited for the year. Stoked to be back on SEN, the best rugby league radio network in the land. But uh, make sure to stay tuned for next week. We'll be back reviewing the games and then previewing the next round. We'll see you then. See you later.